Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show 152, and I'm pumped you're here today. Today is a this is a crazy episode. We are going international, not like uh, international, like we're going to Canada or Australia, like we've done before. Uh, but we're going, we're going to Brazil. All right, we're going straight. This is like real international. Uh, and uh, Gustavo Moreas joins uh, me on the podcast. This is just, it's such a cool uh, episode to hear how laundromats are functioning in, in Brazil. And it's, it's really crazy how there's definitely some def- differences and nuances, which we get into, uh, but there's also a lot of similarities. So very cool to see how, uh, how they're, how, at least how Gustavo is, is running his laundromats in Brazil. Um, super fun episode. Very, he, he shares numbers. He shares details. He, uh, he gives it all. It's really cool. So even if you're not in Brazil, which probably most of you are not in Brazil, uh, this episode is definitely worth a listen. I had a lot of fun. Gustavo is just a great, great guy and uh, is doing some very cool stuff and has some some pretty cool ambitions there in Brazil too, which we get into a little bit. So get ready to have your socks blown off on this episode. Uh, today's fast lane tip is this. Uh, I'm sure many of you know that if you need it, we have got people that you can talk to one-on-one about your particular needs in the laundromat industry, whether that's helping you analyze a, a laundromat deal or asking you asking questions about uh, particular deals, or if that's uh, you know diving deep into your business and maybe helping improve performance or figuring out how to scale, uh, we have got uh, consultants that you can book time with anytime that they're available on those calendars. You just book it straight online. Super clean, super easy. LaundromatResource.com slash coaching, which that link is down below if you're on YouTube. And if you are listening to the podcast, uh, you can go to LaundromatResource.com slash coaching or go to LaundromatResource.com slash show 152, where this and all the other links we talk about today will be um, on the show notes page there. Um, But feel free to check that out anytime you need that. That is available for you, whether you're trying to buy your first laundromat or you own a laundromat or multiple laundromats. We have got a team of consultants over there that can help you out, myself included, but there are some other incredible rock stars like Andrew Cunningham, like Lauren Burkowski over there. So go check that out uh, at laundromatresource.com slash coaching. That's your fast lane tip. Now let's, let's head to South America with Gustavo right after this word from our sponsors. Hello again, laundromat owners. This is John from BMR with today's quick marketing tip. Let's talk about eco-friendly initiatives. In our era, environmental consciousness is not just appreciated, it's often expected. And good business strategy says to use current trends to both market your business and maximize its efficiency. Let's think about this for a second. By incorporating eco-friendly practices, you're also appealing to a growing demographic of environmentally conscious customers. These are individuals who make choices based on sustainability. They're more likely to frequent a business that aligns with their values. So your commitment to the environment can become a key differentiator, setting you apart in a competitive market. But the benefits don't stop there. Eco-friendly measures like energy efficient washers and dryers, solar panels, water recycling systems may require initial investment, but they can pay off big in the long run. They lead to significant savings in utilities and often come with tax benefits. We're talking about cutting costs while boosting the reputation. That is a win-win. So adopting these practices can also inspire customer loyalty. They're not just using your services, they're participating in a cause they care about. This builds a community around your brand, turning customers into advocates. Now you're positioning your business for long-term success. For more free information about eco-friendly initiatives, visit us at buildwithbmr.com forward slash green. Gustavo, how are you doing, man? Hey Jordan, I'm doing fine. Happy to be here. I happy am and honored. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, I'm honored also. Yes, to have you on, and uh, I'm double excited. I'm right now because you're taking us international today, which we'll we'll get to here in a second. But uh, I'm super excited to hear your story and hear your experience. Uh, why don't you take a couple minutes and tell us a little bit about you? Who are you, and how did you work your way into this industry? All right. Uh, well, I am Brazilian. I was born in Brazil. Um, 
at university, I took electrical engineering. During, during university, I, I had the chance to, to teach English as a, as a foreign language for some time. And uh, I could improve my, my level of, of fluency in, in the English language. Uh, I, I used to teach uh, English as, as a foreign language to Brazilians only. Uh, and then uh, after, after I graduated, I, I decided to shift to another area, not related to English and not related to electrical engineering. I started flying helicopters. The, the aviation is, is a crazy segment, man, because uh, you, there's a lot of passion involved and, and your time really doesn't belong to you. And, but it's, 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 it's a mix of, of, of emotions and, and I, I really enjoy aviation, really enjoy flying. But uh, you also have uh, free time to do other stuff, right? To, because when you when you're not sometimes you have long periods of flying in, in my segment at, at least it's like this and then you have long periods of not flying so I looked for something else to do uh, another kind of, of activity that would allow me to keep flying I needed uh, these categories right I, I could uh, work maybe from home uh, it wouldn't be uh, a product like I, I was searching for having a business related to services and um, something else uh, I, I wouldn't like to be sued <laughs> by my customers so the laundromat business <laughs> seemed like a perfect fit so uh, two years ago I, I started uh, researching uh, on, on the on the segment uh, that's also when I got to know your podcast when I was researching about the uh, laundromats after a very good friend of mine who's also a pilot told me that um, he he had just opened one shop uh, a self-service uh, laundromat and he really enjoyed it and he could fly and take care of the business it was it was Pleasant. Yeah. He. Oh, so another category I forgot. Uh, you, I would have to to feel like I'm helping people. Uh, I would be maybe contributing for for my community somehow. And uh, and then after this talk, I, I started researching and I ended up uh, uh, checking franchises. This this is the, the franchise. Franchise or not franchise, this, this dilemma is something that maybe is common to, to people who are new to the business, at least here in Brazil. But um, I think the franchise might give you some, some shortcuts. You know, you might be able to reach some objective faster. You would learn faster. Your learning curve it's probably faster when, when your friend go uh, with a franchise. And that's what I did. I opened my first store in um, uh, September last year. Uh, after, well, I, 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 I acquired a franchise in May. I opened in September. It was actually really fast, uh, finding the right spot. And, and, and then after that, after the first shop, uh, I opened the second and, and already the third. The third was like 20 days ago. And the second was, was a month and a half ago. Wow. Congrats on all that going real fast. Like you, yeah, you, you're like, hey, this business is interesting. You did your research. And after you did your research, you're like, okay, I'm in. And you just kind of went, went after it and got three. How long between the first one and the third one? Getting the first one and the third one. It was September and then, yeah. Well, six, six months. Six months. Opening, yeah? The opening of the first and the opening of the third. And the second was in, in between after... F f uh, a month before the last one. Around a month before. 
All right, six months. That's that's pretty quick. Uh, really, really awesome stuff. So I want to go back real quick. I mean, you talked about being a franchisee, franchisor. Which one is it? I forget. Uh, but you you've got <laughs> franchises. Uh, so yeah. and you talked about some of the pros uh, of being a uh, going the franchise route, which is great because there's a lot of debate on whether going the franchise route is good or not. And you know, I think that shortcut um, is one of the big draws. And also, you know, a lot of people uh, want to go the franchise route because they feel like there's like a safety net there. Um, do you feel like that's the case? Uh, like there's a little bit more security going the franchise route? Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, beca- because I, I am not from this, this kind of business, I, I thought it would be maybe safer to go with the franchise because, well, I'm, I'm, I, I like studying stuff, but uh, uh, I didn't know anything, right? And, and, and now I know just a little bit. <laughs> but it is, it is in this case, uh, uh, I decided to, to go safer. If, if I would start again now with the things I know, I wouldn't go with a franchise, <laughs> okay? Because uh, uh, I learned a lot in, in one year. I learned a lot, and and, and there are some other uh, uh, positive aspects like the brand itself. Yeah, people look at your shop, and and, and they they already recognize that it's something they they know from the market. So that 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 also helps uh, a lot. It's it's funny, right? It's it's like a you. It's like going to a place. You think mm, there might be ghosts. <laughs> there might be ghosts in there. Uh, let me have some safety. <laughs> and then after you go in, maybe there are some ghosts, but but they're nice. They're 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 friendly, and and you 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 get familiar with stuff. So it, it depends on the individual, the individual at, uh, itself, like. Uh, follow your heart, I guess. Yeah. So, okay. So you go the franchise, right? Are there a lot of franchises in Brazil or are there a lot of independent laundromats? What's the, what's the market like there? Yeah, we we have both of them. We have, uh, um, you know, what? talking about the Brazilian market, uh, there are some numbers that that might, might be interesting to, to share. Oh yeah. yeah. Only, only four, percent of the economically active uh, population makes use of laundromats in United States and Europe this number is is way higher it's around 18% there there's a huge possible growth uh, uh, in the Brazilian market there's a there's a research by by an association here of, of laundromats. Uh, it's a national association of laundromats. We concluded that by 2030, th- this number of 4% will grow to 10%, right? In, in six years more. So it's a, it's a huge mark. 6% of the economically active population is, is a huge number. It's another uh, piece of information that might be interesting. In, in uh, 2021, there were 2,000 480 new laundromats in Brazil that were opened. And the following year, 2022, in the first semester only, we had the same number. So it's like it it doubled. Uh, In one year, the number of new laundromats doubled. This is uh, after COVID. Yeah, where... Okay, well, where are people doing their... So if only 4% are doing laundry at laundromats, where do people do laundry? Do they have in-home laundry? Yeah, or where home. do people do the laundry? At home. At home. They have their own uh, domestic yeah. machines. Uh, a very uh, a low percentage of, of families have the, the, the dryers. It's a warm country. So dryers are... Maybe mm-hmm. not so important when you have the space to, to hang your clothes. So, uh, but this habit is changing. This is what the study uh, shows. Uh, because people are going to smaller apartments. 
and then uh, they don't have maybe the space to have a dryer or or maybe a place to hang their clothes after they wash it. Yeah, do you think people are going to the smaller places? Is that is that like an urbanization or what? Yes. Are people just kind of coming yeah. more from from out? Yeah, so people are just coming more to the cities, and so there's more demand. Yeah. I mean, when you say, I mean, we we should talk a little bit about what these laundromats look like here uh, in a second. But when you say you said 2,480 in 2021, and the same amount in the first quarter of 2022, new laundromats—is that what you're saying? The, the first semester, the first semester, first of semester, 2022, new. Uh, new shops, new uh, uh, venues. Wow, that's a lot. That's yes. a lot of new venues for new laundromats uh, to come in. Yeah. So, can you give us a picture? Like, what are these new laundromats looking like? Are they the huge majority is is like small places with uh, self service? I might not be so accurate for for some of the numbers, but uh, most of these uh, new laundromats are are self service. And they are small self-service laundromats, like with uh, three washers and three dryers for 10 kilos uh, each, yeah. which would be the, the 20, uh, 20 pounds, uh, the 20 pounders, you call them, I guess. Yeah, that's about, yeah, that's about right. Uh, some of yeah. them have uh, uh, bigger machines, too. That's wild. Who's... Who's doing all, is it mostly, fran- do you know, is it mostly franchises? Are there people just saying, hey, this is like a thing right now. I'm going to put some washers in a small space, you know, for a community or who's who's building all these things? Yeah, I, I uh, my my impression of the market is that 30% of this, this number of, of uh, uh, laundromats, new laundromats are, uh, they are not franchises, so seventy percent would be franchises, and uh, it's it's interesting to, to also see where they are located. Because, uh, uh, for example, something very common here, uh, uh, people have those those small galleries inside big supermarkets, yeah, with shops mm-hmm. that are specialized in something, and one of these shops uh, would be. Uh, like a, a place to make keys. Uh, another one would fix cell phones and, and, and have covers and, and protection and cables. And the other very common shop in, in one of those galleries would be the laundromats, the self-service laundromats. Because there's a huge convenience there. People, go, uh, they go to the supermarket, they, they usually take maybe up to an hour uh, doing that. And while they're they're buying their stuff, they can also uh, do their laundry, so they save time. This habit, this 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 habit is, is growing in, in the Brazilian society. Uh, sometimes this shop is not not inside a supermarket, but they are very near a supermarket, or very near another big uh, commercial area. When you talk about parking lots, for example, the laundromat doesn't need to have a parking lot because because parking will be available maybe in the supermarket or maybe in this uh, uh, commercial area somewhere. So the laundromats are small. Uh, my third store uh, is only 18 square meters, right? That, that, that is a uh, uh, small space. Two meters uh, uh, by nine, two by nine, something, uh, three by six. Three meters, but it's like a square, very small square. Mm-hmm. You just have a table for for folding. You have some chairs, the machines in a space uh, that is closed for uh, the maintenance of the machines. Maybe air conditioner, uh, depending on the kind of, of where you are located. But it's very simple. Um, it's a, it's a small business. That, that that's actually why I, I opened three already because they. they they are simple. It's easy to get a permit. You don't have to go after a place that already has all the infrastructure. You, you, you can build. You can easily build the, the infrastructure for for the laundromat, like sewage and water, electricity. We usually don't use gas, so they're very simple. For your dryers, are they electric dryers, or are you not having dryers? Electric. 
electric. Always electric. There are dryers that are uh, run by gas, but um, usually mm -hmm. they are used in, in, in bigger places, bigger laundromats. Maybe laundromats that also do dry cleaning and, and they, they have pickup and delivery, wash and fold. The other services they have employees my stores don't have employees so they're just totally unattended do you have to go clean up and do that stuff yeah. i mean i'm sure it wouldn't take too long to clean up you know 18 no. square meters of of store yeah well, the kind of service we 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 need to, to to have to have um hired is cleaning uh when mm -hmm. we have the, the 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 habit of of being there when we open we stay there. We 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 are present in the store for at least a month, trying to welcome new customers and explain how how everything works. Actually, as I said, we are trying to to get a a, a new chunk of the market, people who never did that before. So we go after. We have to explain how mm -hmm. things work, and and our stores also don't use money. We we use only cards. And here in Brazil, we have a, a financial operation that is really interesting. We call it PIX. It's P-I-X, in which I transfer money to you only with a key QR code. You know, you show me a QR code, I scan, and I I send you the money. And the, our machines use that. You you can use your credit card or a debit card. Or you can pay using the, the PIX. So, so we don't deal with money. That also helps uh, uh, in terms of uh, security because uh, you, you, you don't run the risk of, of being uh, robbed or, or something. If, I, if I'm talking too much, please yeah. let me know. Okay. That, no. <laughs> No, man, I'm, I'm fascinated with how this is going. This is, it's really interesting. I'm just trying to picture. I've, so I've never been to Brazil. I've been to South America, right. but I've never been to yes, Brazil. And been so yet. I'm trying to picture, you know, yeah, yet. Well, now I'm going to have to come. I'm going to have to come and check out these, uh, these laundromats you guys got, uh, down there. So I'm going to have to figure yeah, that out. Let me be your host here. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, the other thing I've never been in a helicopter, so uh, man, I got I got a lot of things that are coming on the bucket list right now because of this podcast. So. There you. you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, they are they are both very interested, <laughs> the country and the aircraft. Yeah, I want to go back to uh, the beginning here. Okay, so you talked to your buddy. Your buddy said, "I just bought one of these." You're like, "Yeah, I might do this." So you did your research. You found a franchise that you liked. What was the process of? actually getting started. What did that look like with the franchise? Yeah, uh, I, I called. Uh, I, I Actually, I, I studied around 10 different franchises, the, the, the most famous ones, the ones that, that were in, on the top list of my research. Anyway, s some of them were arrogant. Some were aggressive, too aggressive. Come, 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 bye, 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 bye. So I, I just uh, uh, didn't like that. Yeah. And the one I chose, which is uh, actually, it's an interesting name. The name of the franchise I, I, I'm part of is Laundromat. That's, that's the name. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Very creative. Laundromat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, it's, <laughs> it's, we are in Brazil, so this word is not common here. That's true. Actually, I thought I thought it was it was that's a, right. That's uh, true. Uh, I'm not translating the name. The actual name is L A U N D etc. Right. So <laughs> so uh, the they they were very uh, easygoing. They 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 made me comfortable. They explained what uh, why I wanted to know. They were not in a hurry. Uh, they have a very skin in the game uh, a way of doing things you know if i do well they do well if i don't do well they're not gonna get anything you know uh mm -hmm. prices were were reasonable uh, i i also bought the machines with them uh and i have i have very good support for digital marketing i have 
good support for clients. Actually, if one of my clients have a problem in the, in the shop, they call the franchise, not me. It's not my phone that rings, right? So that is an interesting service nice. for, for a very good price. These, these were the things that made me choose Laundromat, the franchise. Okay, so you picked one out of the, the top 10 most famous ones. You picked the one that's Laundromat, which is great, I think. And <laughs> then what did you do? What did that look like? Did you go look for a location or what, was the, what were the steps that you took to actually open the doors of your first Laundromat? Man, this is, this is, uh, this word location, this is actually very important, uh, at least here, because uh, it is not easy to find uh, an interesting place. I was, uh, uh, at first I was aiming at supermarkets. I wanted to have a shop inside a supermarket. This, this is a shop that never closes. When the supermarket closes, my store is closed. I have uh, security. Uh, I have people passing by all the time. You know, I have the support of the, the, the supermarket. So uh, they, they were rare. You know, these, these possibilities were rare. I, I called all the, the supermarket chains uh, uh, that have uh, these galleries. And uh, the first one that, that gave me a shot uh, was, in my opinion, already a good one. So that's, that's how I, I started my first one. But it was, I needed to insist. And it was funny. I, I had been insisting for some time uh, all, all, with all these guys. And then one day I was, was passing by a supermarket and I thought, well, I never, I've never been inside this one. Then I went there and I saw a shop that was available. And then I, I talked to one of the attendants. She said, oh, just a minute. Uh, I'm going to give you this phone number that I called a person that I had never called before. So when this person made the, the, the connection and said, okay, uh, this one is, is, is available take a look. Uh, and then that's, that's how things started. I, I, I didn't hesitate much to, to choose that one, but it was hard to find. And the, the second one is not in a supermarket. The second one is, is in a commercial, uh, second shop is in a commercial uh, gallery. Um, it's like a, a, a mall, but it, it's, it, you, you have two, two, uh, streets that are, are very uh, populated, let's say, and these two streets are connected to to a gallery of stores. So they are this this gallery also closes. So again, my shop has no doors. You know when when the doors close, my shop is closed. But this second store has has an advantage because. Inside this gallery, inside these doors, there are four apartment buildings with 176 families living in these buildings. And uh, they only access their, their building through the gallery. So I never close. This, this shop is open 24 hours for uh, these these people who live in the building in, in these four buildings and during commercial hours they are open to to the public well that's the whole making money while you sleep thing that's you know that's yeah. the goal like yeah. have that business running whether you're there or not and and whether you're awake or not which is great have you have you run into many problems i mean it sounds like you're in pretty heavily trafficked areas and areas where there's people around a lot are have you had any problems with it at all? Vandalism or anything like that? No, vandalism, not at all. Uh, the only thing, uh, actually, we are facing here is is having to to convince people this system uh, is interesting. This system is is economically worth it. We need to teach. We have to make them have the habit of of taking their clothes to to self service laundromat. The the attendant laundromats. 
obviously have been around for for uh, decades, right? But the unattended laundromats are are very are are becoming this this started like five years ago, so people are still learning how to to use them. But it's 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 man, it's a trend. It's a huge trend. I I, I can I can see that the the numbers of of my my, my shops. They, they, they fluctuate. Actually, uh, the, the oldest store uh, was open during summer. The other two weren't. But during summer, uh, many people travel mm-hmm. in Brazil. So the numbers, uh, they started well. They went down a little. Uh, now they're, they're picking up again. Uh, but I feel that the, 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 the convincing, the, the, the selling uh, uh, the service is, is important right now. What kinds of what kinds of things are you doing to try to sell that? I mean, it sounds like by having all these new ones coming in all at once, that sort of like the the rising tide lifts all boats. So hopefully, business will grow because of that. Are you doing anything in particular, any kind of marketing or anything like that, to help draw more awareness and you know, like you've been saying, like create a new habit of coming to the yeah. self serve laundromat and and getting it done there? Yeah, uh, apart from from digital marketing. In the, in the newest uh, uh, shop, we have a person there every day, uh, six hours a day during the busiest times. I, I, I didn't mention, but the third one is also in a supermarket and, uh, and it's in a different city, right? It's, it's not in the city I live. So I take 30 minutes to get there, uh, sometimes more. So we have a person there, uh, person who is from the city, who is uh, uh, there six hours a day during the busiest hours, explaining how, how things work. If the system works, we might implement the same thing in the other stores. But, but we also go, me and my partner, we, we, we very often go to the stores and we stay there for some time. We clean and we talk to people. And we introduce ourselves and, and the, the, the teaching clients is not so easy because this it has to be in person right it can't be remote it's hard to do this remotely right there is that learning curve there for customers too and if they get frustrated the first time they go they may never come back right if they if they don't understand what to do or how it all works uh you know so that that learning curve is that's a real that's maybe you should like play a video on a loop of like here's what to do yeah it's a, it's a good idea. Let me take a note. <laughs> but uh, the, the the video is, is is a possibility. But I also think they might come back. I, I because creating a habit maybe takes takes not just one thing. It, it takes a couple of things. You know, maybe a friend tells you it's nice. Then you 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 go by and you take a closer look. You read instructions. Then you you go away and then. One day you need, your machine breaks and you, ah, today I'm going to try that thing there. I, 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 this is not the only way, but uh, I also believe uh, we might uh, be able to, to draw the attention of, of people who go by and at first they think they, they would never use that service. I, I think they might change their minds. Hope I'm right. <laughs> Me too, man. Me too. Well, and it sounds like it is moving that direction, right? You're on the, the front end of the trend uh, that's happening there, which is good. Can we can we talk a little bit like how you can give kind of ballpark numbers, but like how much does it cost to open up a franchise of, you know, this relatively small store uh, in like a supermarket or commercial shopping center or whatever yeah the 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 exchange rate is five to one so uh one uh dollar okay one american dollar is is five five brazilian reais okay so but all all i can say in american dollars using the exchange rate it's around thirty thousand to to open a shop and in this money we already have the like three stacks like three dryers and three washers it's around 30,000 including uh the 
the remodeling of the the shop electricity the the piping exhaust the the exhausting pipes uh the infrastructure in general actually this is something me and my partner did we went there and we <laughs> uh, uh, put the cables the the pipes and uh, uh we, we just didn't paint and and we didn't do dry walls but uh man it was we saved a lot of money this this would be one of my oh i can't secret sauce i can't say that yet sorry <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> service service we all yeah. know service is, is not cheap right and, uh, and if you if you know how to do yeah and you have the time yeah you can save a lot of money that way for sure yeah yeah thank you for giving kind of a ballpark number that that 30,000 uh in USD is it's pretty attractive that's you're not finding too much stuff around here for 30,000 sure. so that's kind of interesting yeah, but again it's a, it's a small shop right and, and it's only six machines yeah i know well i want to get into that a little bit but i'm going to wait for down to business um, I want to talk about sure. sort of your overall, like after you opened this first one, you and your partner opened this first one, like, how did it go? Was it what you expected? Was it not what you expected? Did business come immediately or was it slow at first? How, how was that? We had a promotion. I said like a special price, a special opening price. Each cycle uh, uh, for washing or drying uh, uh, 10 kilos, which would be 20 pounds is here in, in, in American dollars is something like uh, three and a half dollars, right? This is a normal price. So we, we, we had a, a promotion and then uh, we had a price like $2.50, around something like that. And then in the first month, we already reached uh, break even. It was amazing. <laughs> it was like Dang. we had yeah. 10 days of 10 days of almost nothing but then the following 30 days was was really interesting and then summer came right so summer sort of uh, jeopardized our operation a little bit <laughs> people travel and people and we have more sun here in in our city we get like that here in LA too people travel a lot in the summer but also yeah we basically wear no clothes all summer. We're in bikinis and speedos <laughs> pretty much all summer. So uh, not a whole lot to wash, right? <laughs> well, a, a lot of speedos in, in, in the shop then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, too, too bad I went to LA in, in the winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too bad. Next time, next time. Uh, okay. So you, you had, uh, 10 days of almost nothing. I mean, in those 10 days, were you, were you getting nervous? Were you worried that, oh man, maybe this isn't going to oh. work or were you pretty confident man, the whole it's, time? It's, it's, it's funny when, when you open a, 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 the, the laundry service is something that people can't just consume right when, when they see it and then out of the blow. Oh, I'm going to consume that service. No, you need your, your right. dirty clothes. So now, um, unless you provide pickup and delivery, but uh, so uh, people have to see that it's there. Oh, so next time I'm going to bring my clothes. So, so it takes some time for people to start coming. Oh, now it's open. When, when we were remodeling the shop, we, we of, of course we, informed people what we would have there, uh, the, the date of opening and everything. But people want to see it open, right? So, oh, okay. So next time I come to the supermarket, I might bring my my laundry. So this is what happened. So our, our first month was, was really good. But uh, it is picking up again. And uh, I, I feel good about it. You know, to, to be honest, uh, uh, numbers aren't fantastic. But this investment is is more of a long term investment, and I I also as a, as an owner I need to learn. This is my feeling. I need to learn more, uh, and each shop 
will bring me different uh, um, insights. Uh, will help help me in different ways to to make the whole thing uh, do well, right? Uh, uh, I have to listen to more laundromat resource podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like uh, the learning is is endless. You know, uh, the the three different uh, uh, shops will will help me uh, understand the, the the business better with local details. The learning is endless, right? Like, I don't know. I've been in this industry about a little over a decade now, and I've talked with hundreds of laundromat owners, and I've talked with hundreds of people who are in the industry who may or may not own laundromats better in the industry other ways. And I'm always learning something new. You know, every podcast interview, I'm learning new things. That's why I take notes during the podcast interviews. I'm always learning new things. So I like having that mindset. I, I like that you have that mindset because if you can keep that mindset, you will continue to grow, right? You will continue to learn. Uh, and that's, I think what, you know, business owners need to do. That's what we need to do is it's so easy to get stuck in. Okay. I've got, you know, my three machines, uh, or my six machines in in each of my stores, and I'm just going to let them run until they make money. Like people do that and you can do that, but eventually you're going to kind of cap out, right? If you continue to learn, continue to grow, you know, you can expand or you can, uh, increase profitability. Uh, there, I mean, there's just a whole host of different ways that you can go if you just keep that mindset that you want to keep learning, keep growing, sort of that abundant mindset of there's always more to learn. I'll never know everything there is to know. So let's continue to pursue that knowledge. And that's, I love, I love that you're saying that right now. I think it's so important. Actually, and there's something else. Uh, I remember you, you also said that apply something you learned today. You know, don't stop at uh, uh, learning, <laughs> you you have to, to to make it like turn into an action, right? Act on top of what you learned. Yeah, well, and that's that's key, right? Uh, you can get stuck in the learning cycle, uh, but you've yeah. got to actually go out and do the stuff, right? But you're doing it. That's that's the whole point, right? Is you're learning, but you're doing it as you're learning, and because you're doing it, you're learning, and because you learn while you're doing it, you're doing better. And, you know, that's, it's this cycle of learning, doing, learning, doing, learning, doing. We get stuck in that learning loop, learning, 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 learning. Sure. We never go out and do it. It doesn't take us anywhere. Uh, but I love, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're out there doing it. You've got uh, three of these laundromats in, in six months and you're doing while you're learning and you're learning while you're doing, which is beautiful. It's perfect. And, and, uh, you know something I feel now that the, the third one is ready. I now maybe I, I'm gonna have more time to, to work on the the operation because before I was mm-hmm. I was too worried with uh, finding a, a a new spot and and then remodeling the shop, remodeling two shops, and I also I, I flew a lot. <laughs> during these, these, these months, these, these summer months. So uh, time uh, is important. You, you, you got to give yourself also some, some time to, to uh, see the changes uh, uh, of the things you, you created. Yeah? Uh, you, we, we can't expect uh, a response uh, right after you, you, you do something. I mean, speaking of time, how much time are you working on these laundromats right now? Do you have an idea? I think something like four hours a day, average. Around four hours a day, yeah. But uh, there are times I... I because I, I have a, a partner, another guy who's, who's an engineer, uh, who also has some free time and, and we, we also take turns sometimes taking care of the shops. One of the shops uh, has, has 
a temporary employee, so I, I needed to recruit that person. But also answering your question, while I'm there, um, I I clean and I talk to, to customers. I, I put myself uh, in a position where I am available to to explain. I some 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 person passes by, stops, and starts reading the 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 signs we have there. I say hi. Would you, would you like some some kind of explanation on how the system works? This is new, and then uh, this is my favorite thing to do actually while I'm there, right? Because I'm I'm doing that thing. I I believe I'm, I'm trying to help the people in the community to to be educated because this is actually very local, right? This is a business that is very physical. You you might find a laundromat through mm-hmm. digital ways yeah you might hear about them but you're only going to go to to the one that that is geographically uh, uh, uh interesting to you at that moment that's that's such a local hyper local almost uh spot that you know having that face to face and putting a face to the business is so important and showing that you're yeah, part of exactly. that community uh, there as a business is, I, I mean, that's probably the best return on investment you can get is having those conversations and saying, hey, let me explain to you how this works and, and those conversations, because that's where sort of relationships start to build and people want to do business with people they know, right? And so if they get to know you and your partner, they're more likely to come do business with you. Sure. And, and, and this is something that, that well, there that, that are, I think, uh, in America, you guys have much more pickup and delivery and, and wash and fold businesses than, than in Brazil. Uh, and we have many more, uh, we have more, uh, proportionally, we have more small laundromats, local laundromats that serve a small community. So, so that's why they are spread everywhere, but, then, but they're small because they, they, they bring this service to a small number of families. Uh, in, in Brazil, another interesting number is that 98% of the laundromats are, uh, we call them micro, micro companies or small companies. So uh, only 2% are considered to be medium or big, big companies, right? Uh, and, and something I, I, I also believe might happen in, in our market is, is the growth of, of pickup and delivery and the growth of, of wash and fold um, businesses. Uh, yeah. As, as well, I'm sure... I'm sure that'll be As growing. The idea progresses, you know. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be growing. It'll be interesting to see if it does grow there. How, you know, one one of the big obstacles or I guess struggles once uh, a laundromat decides to do pickup and delivery is space uh, for stuff. So I wonder if it'll stay hyper local uh, on the pickup and delivery because you just if you're in. 18 square meters, you, there's just not a lot of space, right? So no, if you get the, yeah, too much sure. laundry, you really don't have a place to put it. <laughs> and you only have I, I agree you know, three you. washers, three dryers. Yeah. So you can't do a huge volume of it. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if it does kind of take off how that how that all works out there in that market. Because I think it'll be a little different than how it works here. Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's an American... Uh, uh, a company, uh, the food. I'm sure you're, you're familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, oh yeah, the Mark. Yeah, Mark Vlaskamp, the fold. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that kind of operation, I think, would would uh, uh, pick up here in Brazil, and uh, because mm. you you don't have to be very close to people. You can be uh, far away, but you you have a very good logistics team and you have good machines uh, that that kind of uh, uh, investment will for sure uh, uh, happen here soon uh, 
and and man, it's it's a huge market. Brazil uh, is is the population is two hundred and fifteen million people. Uh, That's massive. Yeah, uh, and and the the, the whole country uh, is 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 now going through this 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 frenzy of of self service uh, laundromats. Uh, the 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 franchise I'm part of, they have around 300 stores, and and they are spread all over the country. There is no special area that, of course, the big cities have Rio and, and São Paulo have have more shops, but it's a, it's it's a it's a market that is open for for the people who want to invest. The, the, these big companies that would like to invest, I think they. They would do well here. Interesting stuff. Where Where are you located in Brazil? I am in the south, the the, the cold part, <laughs> cold part of Brazil. <laughs> people here uh, wear jackets, <laughs> gloves, boots. We it's of course it's it's kind of warm <laughs> right now, but uh, we even have uh, snow here sometimes. That's not so what we the think name of. of my city we is, think of Brazil. No, yeah, yeah. We 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 don't have, actually Curitiba is, is kind of cloudy. Uh, it's, it's famous for in Brazil for being cloudy uh, and cold. We are at a huh. three uh, three thousand feet altitude and uh, uh, around a hundred miles from from the ocean uh, in the south of Brazil. So the, the latitude is is high. Is it, the latitude is is Similar to maybe, well, I'm guessing here, maybe Florida, maybe a little, a little uh, south of Florida, but but it, it yeah. is it is cold because of the altitude. Yeah. Oof. All right. And and Curitiba has around two two million people. Two million. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. big. Uh, all right. So you've got your three laundromats. It sounds like. You just opened that third one and you're going to take a pause and work on operations a little bit, but what's the, yeah. do you have like a big, like future goal? Do you have aspirations to build more? <laughs> what, what's the goal here? Do you have I one? Do. The goal is, is 10 shops in, in five years. And I, I have just okay. four years ahead to, to, to reach five years. But yeah, it's it's doable if I learn well and if I if I do my job, it might be doable. It's only seven to go. Only seven to go. Sounds so easy. <laughs> Sounds so easy. I heard your podcast once the 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 term uh, my laundromat empire <laughs> will consist of maybe ten shops. <laughs> That's right. So I mean. You said your goal is to get to 10 laundromats. Uh, you've already got three in six months. And you said 10 in five years. I mean, obviously, if you got the same pace, you're going to way past 10. But what what do you think the obstacles are going to be to keep you from getting to 10? We have to see how the how the trend goes. How if if society will embrace the, the habit in, in this the, in the rhythm I would like it to uh, basically I think it's 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 that it's not for sure yet we well let's see I I I like the business I that that part actually in the beginning I I didn't know if I would actually like it but uh, I have been enjoying this very much it's it's a uh, it's not charming, but it's pretty neat, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's a neat business. It is a neat business. It's a, it's it's so clean. <laughs> right? It's nice. It's I I I, I <laughs> should be. I I I have I have good tools to to I have the, the cameras and and all the online uh, uh, information we get. Is, is is nice. The system of payment has been working well. Uh, the machines are fantastic. 
we actually use only speed queens. We also have uh, 30 pounders that are speed queens and mm -hmm. uh, they have touch screen and, and they're cool. Uh, so let's see, uh, the, the obstacles would be getting good locations, getting good locations and, and maybe having the trend pick up. Yeah. Well, you can, you can only do, do so much about each of those, right? You can keep looking for locations, uh, but there's only so much you can do, you know, with how society is sure. receiving these and if they're decide to utilize them. But it's, I mean, it sounds like it's happening. If there were, you know, 5,000 new ones basically in the last couple of years that have come onto the, you know, onto the scene here, uh, man, either there's going to be a lot of business owners hurting or people are starting to use these things and, and the trend is, is picking up. So I guess time will tell sure. on that one. Are you actively looking for another location or are you just taking a pause on looking? Yeah, I'm taking a pause, <laughs> taking a pause. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's also the, the financial side, right? You can always, uh, right. uh, finance your your investment uh but uh i right now i i'm trying to have this this balance and, and see how things go learn a little more because this is this is not my my main uh, activity so i don't need to right. to rush to to yeah maybe uh hurry too much i can go slow awesome well we've got a segment of the podcast called down to business uh let's get down to business over and out that's where we just dig a little bit deeper i mean we've already talked about a lot of this stuff already uh in this sure. uh interview but uh you're in you're in south brazil we talked about that already uh in in a cold part which is not my conception of Brazil, I just see sun and beaches and dancing and all that. Uh, so you're, you're blowing my mind here. You got all the, all the stuff going on in Brazil. Uh, you got three, uh, you've been, what, when did, remind me again, when did you buy the first one? Is that September? Is that what you said? Yeah, it was, uh, May, but I opened in September. Oh, May. Last year. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, and we talked about VIN prices. You said the your eighteen kilo or your ten kilograms, ten kilogram washers. I'm trying to I'm trying to retranslate back to your uh, your the, the real <laughs> metric system over there. That's, uh, that's the nice. Ten you. kilogram washers you said were about three fifty in our money. Is that what it was? Yeah. In U.S. dollar. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, and we provide soap and softener. Yeah, did you say you have thirty pound washers too? Yes, we do. Okay, what do those run? Those are around five, five and a half American dollars. Okay, cool. And then for the dryers, do you have <clears throat> uh, do you have like one price for a certain amount of time? How do how do you do the dryer pricing? Yeah, it's one fixed amount of time. You can change the temperature. But it's always forty five minutes up until uh, up up to up to okay. forty five minutes, yeah. Because you can you can remove your clothes before that if you want if they're dry. Do you find, out of curiosity, do you find, and maybe because it's cold there, no. But do you find that people use the washers but not the dryers, or do people pretty much always use the dryers? Uh, I'm just thinking, All you know, maybe time. people are used to hanging their clothes. I know some some people prefer that. Um, yeah, man, I, we have all kinds of things. We have people who, who come to the store only to dry, only to wash, and both, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. They, they, they leave, sometimes yeah. they leave the store with their clothes uh, still wet. Another question I have is, I mean, do you have any idea of how many turns per day the launder, uh, you know, laundromats are doing or the machines sure. are doing? Yeah. We have, uh, I usually keep track of the number of turns per day, but not specifically in, in, in the machine. So 
my average goes around 10. It's from eight to 10. So I have six machines in each store. All of the machine, all of the stores have six uh, machines. So it's something you just do the math. That that is is, mm -hmm. is what I have per day in average, but every day of the week, including That's Sunday and holidays, the the second store uh, has a different uh, uh, time. Yeah, opening hours. It never closes, and, and it serves uh, four apartment buildings during the night and and any time of the day. So, and and it, and these guys use the the, the store. So the second store has a, a, an average that is a little higher, maybe one, one and a half cycles a day higher. Do you find that people prefer, because if you have the, I'm going to butcher the sizes, but you have 10, 10 kilogram and 15 kilogram or whatever. What, what are the yes. two sizes? Do you find that people yes. prefer one or the other size? Yeah. They prefer the 10, 10 kilograms because maybe, maybe, yeah, they, maybe they wash their clothes uh, often. One of the problems I have sometimes is, and, uh, and I still have to educate the, the customers is sometimes they try to overload the machines, you know, Just instead of using the, the, yeah. the 30 pounders, they, they try to put like uh, uh, too much stuff in, in, in the small machines, but uh, it's very soon. I think these people will understand that it's it's just uh, they, they're they're having an, a disadvantage by, by doing that, not a financial advantage. Yeah, yeah, we have that same problem. <laughs> same problem here. People want to stuff as many clothes as they can in the washer, but it doesn't allow everything to kind of mix and wash correctly uh when they do that so it actually is not good for they think they're saving money but it actually doesn't save them any money once i had a chance to show a client i i i called him and said T take a look at the the washer here T take a look at your clothes see, see what's happening with them and then i had another one on the side and i said okay now look at that one what do you think is, is, is it because Clothes were stuck, right? Just spinning, <laughs> spinning and not moving. Right. Yep. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, we're always going to have uh, uh, people who try that, but uh, it's a matter of, of uh, maybe learning how to, to use this tool, right? To use the service. In some ways, it connects us all, right? We all have that same issue where customers yeah. are going to try to overfill the washers. They're going to try to use too much soap. And, you know, I, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I talked to a customer and I said, who's complaining that there was a lot of soap in the or, you know, detergent in the washer. And I'm like, well, the only way there's too much detergent in the washer is if you put too much detergent in the washer. <laughs> Uh, but you know, somehow it's always the machine's fault. Um, not their fault, but you know, we all are going to have that in common. It's going to be great. We'll, we'll bond it over. It comes with the business. Yeah. Uh, we got another segment of the pod. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> we got another segment of the podcast called secret sauce. Listen up. It's the secret sauce. Secret sauce is. You know, and we kind of already let the cat out of the bag a little bit, but tell us something that, that you found that's been working for you um, and helping you to grow your business, improve your business. This is a little uh, unfair because I, I, because I already listened to a lot of your episodes, I, I already heard a lot of uh, secret sauces <laughs> before, right? So <laughs> I have that's to right. try and not repeat any of the secret sauces I heard. So I thought of something uh, that might work for, for some places is um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't depend on venues, which already have the structure for a laundromat before opening one. I would look for, because, because if you do that, you would be maybe 
too limited. I would try to find new places, places that have never been <laughs> a laundromat. So if, if the permits are, are not so difficult, which is the case here, uh, I would try to do that. And, and it worked for me so far. Yeah. None of the I shops awesome. I own uh, have been laundromats before. Well, I think that's, I think that's awesome because, you know, there's something to be said for having a empty space that you can kind of build and mold however you, however you want it to be and however you want it to look. It can get more complicated if there are permits needed and the stores gets bigger yeah. and you need more machines and all that stuff. But, uh, but man, I, I think that there's definitely something to be said for finding that white box as we call it here, white box, find the white box and turn it into the space that's uh, designed the way that you think it needs to be designed uh, to, to suit your customer base the best. So awesome secret sauce. We've got another segment of the podcast called pro tips. Pro tips. You got any advice for anybody who was maybe you a year ago looking for your first uh, laundromat? You got any advice for them? Good. Well, I almost don't consider myself a pro yet, at least not yet, but, uh, from what I've lived so far, I, I can say study your location as much as possible because location is, is everything. Location uh, uh, will determine whether the business will be successful or not. Uh, of course, it's not the only thing, but uh, you... Uh, it's, it's also the study you you do before we also prevent from you from from regretting in the future you know so you might if you if you go maybe too fast ah let's go here and, and that's okay you might in the future think ah oh, maybe i should have uh, uh should have studied a little more and not gone with the first thing that opened up. I love I wrote down that quote as you were saying it. The study you do before will prevent you from regret. Like, I thought that was great, a great quote. And obviously, I mean, I think it's a great advice to get as educated as you can, you know, uh, before jumping into any, any endeavor, really, any business, any new endeavor that you're getting into. But, you know, this industry in particular – uh, it makes all the sense in the world to to get educated, which brings us to our last segment of the show, which is recommended resources. Uh, do you got any resources you can recommend and or places where people can get educated uh, on this industry? Well, I would strongly recommend, honestly, uh, I would recommend your podcast because uh, uh, you you get to <laughs> hear you. from from all kinds of, of, of people, yeah, you, that are, I mean, not, not only the podcasts, but uh, you, you, you have the live Q&A, uh, uh, the videos, you, you, you will uh, uh, sort of find yourself somewhere there. But uh, other than uh, uh, your, your content, uh, there are some, some agencies that promote um, small businesses here in Brazil. They, they are run by the government, but uh, they are very effective. There's one here called Sebrae, which uh, uh, provides, again, lots of content for, for small businesses in general. These guys helped me a lot. Uh, I was able to get some tips in terms of uh, accountancy, uh, uh, the projects you need to have before opening, the, 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 the planning, financial planning. So I'm sure uh, in America you can also find that and, and, and it, this is something common in, in many countries around. Uh, agencies that promote uh, people who are opening businesses, entrepreneurs. Great. Awesome uh, resources. And uh, listen, this has been, this has been awesome for me to get to hear 
what you've been doing over the last oh, uh, little less than a year in growing your laundromat empire and uh, <laughs> in really just kind of hearing how, you know, laundry is different in different places. And this business, yeah. I talk about this a lot, like business is so simple, right? But there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can buy these. I just visited a store here in Southern California, 11,000 square foot store. Um, and, you know, you're talking about one that's 18 square meters. Uh, so, you know, they can be huge with, you know, a hundred plus machines and they can be small with six machines and you can make True. money, uh, doing this and you can serve the community doing this and you can connect with the community doing this. So it's been very cool to hear your experience so far and the lessons that you've learned, uh, early on in your journey. We're going to have to have you back on first of all, uh, in <laughs> at the very minimum in five years, uh, because I need to know if you're going nice, to hit man. your 10 laundromats in five years, but my guess is you're going to hit that much sooner than that 10 years. That's my guess. Uh, but, uh, man, I really appreciate you coming on. I have one more question for you before we wrap this thing up. Uh, if people have been inspired by you or they want to connect with you or they have questions for you, uh, or they want to start a franchise in Brazil with you, uh, what's the best way people can get in contact with you? <laughs> okay. My, my professional email is, is g at gmorais.com. Uh, Morais is uh, M-O-R-A-E-S. Um, we also have uh, the, the Facebook page and the Instagram page. They go by uh, the Instagram, for example, is A, the, 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 the at Laundromat WB for the Instagram. And uh, Facebook is the same thing, just slash Laundromat WB. Uh, I, man, I, I, it's been a pleasure for me. Uh, it's funny to be, to be talking to you here after uh, having listened <laughs> to you so many times. Uh, uh, I really appreciate what what you do for the, the the business, what you do for the industry. Uh, and as you can see, not only in America, but also other places in in Brazil, in in the world. <laughs> okay, I'm sure I'm not the only one in in, in Brazil. Uh, the only limit for these people is is knowing the English language, right? But we might. Talk about that later. <laughs> Having laundromat resources. Let's talk in about other that. Languages. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's right. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think that that is a great idea. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, Jordan. Take it easy. Thank you so much, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. The last thing I want to say. No, I mean, number one, this has been great, and, and another huge thank you to you. But I just want to say a quick message. Uh, to your kids that you are, you're doing it over here. You are an all-star and you know, now <laughs> you're, kids. you're going to be a YouTube star. Right. I mean, that's, uh, that's yeah. given, right. <laughs> going to be a well, YouTube star. Least, and, uh, I just, I just want them to know that you are a hero. That's what I want them to know. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, man. The nine year old might believe you. The, the, the older ones, I'm not so sure. <laughs> We'll have you back on and, and want to hear kind of the update and the progress that's happening there. And who knows, maybe one of these days I'll get down there and get to see him in person. That would be awesome. Sure. That would be great, man. That would be a pleasure. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to show you the, the dancing and, and the beaches. Okay. But we would have to travel a little. <laughs> okay. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. <laughs> All right, man. Okay. I appreciate you so much. Take it easy. Okay. Thanks. Fascinating stuff with Gustavo. Such a good time uh, I had talking with him. And that was just a lot of fun hearing how laundromats are functioning down there. And it just got my wheels spinning. I'm like, oh man, maybe I uh maybe I need to move south a little bit here. <laughs> we'll see. Uh dude, I do have a goal of going to visit you know, the people who come on this show, I want to come see their operations, see what they've got going on. So now I've got to put Brazil on that to-do list uh, in my travel bucket list there, uh, which sounds like a good thing to me. So a uh, huge shout out and thank you to Gustavo for coming on. 
Uh, hopefully you found some nuggets in there that you can apply to your business or to your uh, uh, pursuit of a business uh, there. And if you did, listen, every single episode, there is at least one thing that you can do today or this week and actually put something into action. So get out there and do it. Uh, be inspired by Gustavo and get after it and, and make your dreams happen. All right. All right. We'll see you next week. Peace.